Hello, my name is Michael Gall, Product Manager for Cerberus DMS for Siemens Building Technologies. Our how-to video series will walk you through the basic functions for operating and controlling your Cerberus DMS management station. Cerberus DMS is a management station for monitoring and controlling all fire panels available in the Cerberus Pro portfolio, along with the Siemens legacy fire panels. There are two versions available. The first is Cerberus DMS Compact, which supports up to 2,000 fire points, 128 video cameras, and three operator workstations. The second version, Cerberus DMS, supports up to 66,000 fire points on a single server, over 1,000 video cameras, and numerous operator workstations. Both Cerberus DMS Compact and Cerberus DMS provide a feature set that is well suited for managing your Siemens fire system. Additional features included with both Cerberus DMS Compact and Cerberus DMS are remote notification via email and SMS, remote access via mobile app and computer, macros, powerful reports, and online device log viewing, assisted treatment to guide inexperienced operators through the treatment of an event, powerful vector graphics engine for visual representation and navigation of your site, monitor third-party fire panels, and the ability to share information in Cerberus DMS with third-party systems via OPC. This how-to video will focus on the operation of the fire system from Cerberus DMS. To begin, I will describe the user interface and go over the main features. The user interface is divided into three main areas, summary bar, event list, and node map. This is the standard operator interface. However, additional user interface screens are available for configuration and maintenance of the system. First, we have the summary bar, which is located at the top of the screen. It provides constant system status by displaying a summary of the number of events in the system of each type, life safety, security, supervisory, trouble, fault, and status. When a new event is received, the corresponding event lamp will flash and the event count will increase. In addition, the two most important events requiring attention are displayed in the event detail bar just below the event lamps. The summary bar also contains information such as who is logged in, the current time and date, and a menu to access the online help tool, switch operators, and more. When all connected panels are in normal standby mode, the summary bar will indicate zero of zero in each event lamp and no events will be displayed in the event detail bar. Note that the summary bar is always visible and cannot be minimized or hidden by other windows. However, it is possible to collapse the summary bar so it takes up less space on the screen by clicking on the upward pointing triangle in the far upper right hand corner of the summary bar. Next, we have the event list, which is always located below the summary bar. The event list displays all active events on the connected panels. The event list contains a row for each event with several columns of information describing that event. Starting on the left-hand side of the screen, there is an event icon that graphically summarizes some of the most important information about the event. By hovering the mouse cursor over the event icon, additional information is displayed in a tooltip box. The event button will flash and the audio buzzer will sound until the event is acknowledged. The next column is the event cause column, which provides a textual description of the event cause. Then we have the source column, which indicates the physical location of the device where the event is occurring. To the right of that is the date and time column, followed by the message text column, which provides more detailed information about the event cause. The commands column contains the next available command to manage each event. The commands are acknowledge, silence, or unsilence, and reset. The information column contains three buttons, open related treatment, log and event note, and show information text. Note that if the full event list is not visible and only the event bar is visible, click on one of the two display expand collapse event list buttons located here and here. If there are more events in the system than what can be displayed on a single screen, Use the scroll bar on the right-hand side of the screen to view the additional events. At the bottom of the screen is the node map, which displays the status of each fire panel connected to the system, providing you situational awareness at all times. Like the summary bar, the node map is always visible and cannot be minimized or hidden by other windows. When a connected panel is in normal standby mode, the corresponding panel icon in the node map will have a green fill. 
When the connected panel is in an off normal state, the corresponding panel icon will have a fill color that matches the highest priority event active on the panel. You can request control of a panel from another operator by selecting the panel in the node map and then clicking on the Request Ownership button in the toolbar. The node map toolbar provides additional capabilities such as disconnect and connect a panel, various sorting and filtering commands, searching and zooming operations. Note that the event lamps in the summary bar, the event icons in the event list, and the panel icon in the node map will flash and the audio buzzer will sound until the event is acknowledged. I'll now demonstrate the usage of the system. An alarm is indicated in the summary bar by the red flashing life safety lamp and the red flashing fire panel icon in the node map. In addition, a red event will be displayed in the event list with a red flashing event icon and the workstation audio indicator will sound. To acknowledge the alarm, press the Acknowledge button located in the Commands column in the event list. The workstation audio indicator will be silenced in the Life Safety Event Lamp, Event Icon in the Event List, and the Source Fire Panel icon in the Node Map will change from On Flashing to On Steady. You will see as you acknowledge an event, the next available command in the Commands column in the Event List changes from Acknowledge to the Silence Audibles command button. To silence the notification appliance after evacuation, where permitted, press the Alarm Silence button located in the Commands column in the event list. The silenceable notification appliances will be silenced. You will see as you silence the audibles, the next available command in the Commands column changes from Silence to the Unsilenced Audibles command button. The Reset button is also displayed. Note: Do not reset the panel until the alarm has been cleared. When the alarm condition is corrected, and when authorized, return the panel to the normal standby operation by pressing the reset button. A supervisory alarm is indicated in the summary bar by the blue flashing supervisory lamp and the blue flashing fire panel icon in the node map. In addition, a blue event will be displayed in the event list with a blue flashing event icon and the workstation audio indicator will sound. To acknowledge the supervisory signal, press the Acknowledge button located in the Commands column in the event list. The workstation audio indicator will be silenced in the supervisory lamp, event icon in the event list, and the source fire panel icon in the node map will change from On Flashing to On Steady. When the supervisory condition has been cleared, you may need to reset the panel to restore to a normal standby condition by pressing the Reset button. A trouble is indicated in the summary bar by the yellow flashing trouble lamp and the yellow flashing fire panel icon in the node map. In addition, a yellow event will be displayed in the event list with a yellow flashing event icon and the workstation audio indicator will sound. To acknowledge the trouble signal, press the Acknowledge button, located in the Commands column in the event list. The workstation audio indicator will be silenced in the trouble event lamp, event icon in the event list, and the source fire panel icon in the node map will change from on flashing to on steady. When the trouble condition has been cleared, you may need to reset the panel to restore to a normal standby condition by pressing the reset button. Warning, devices in a trouble condition may not report a fire alarm. Thank you for watching this presentation. We hope this video will help your team effectively operate your Cerberus DMS system. Please feel free to reach out to us with your future fire and life safety needs. Siemens, ingenuity for life.